Hey, what's up? Jody Chafee, host of the Family Culture Movement. And today I want to talk to you about what I learned from Rachel and Oliver DeMille. They are the founders of a Thomas Jefferson education. It's a form of leadership education that kind of combines like unschooling with classical education a little bit. And, and uh, it's, it's amazing. And what I've learned from them is so powerful. So they have something called the seven keys of great teaching. And they have actually added two more. And you go to you can go to their website and find them all. But I want to talk about one specifically called the you not them principle. And there's like this there's when they understand would to understand the seven keys, there's like to understand that there's an ideal situation and then there's like an authoritarian situation and then there's like a permissive situation. And we try to avoid the authoritarian and the permissive, right? We want to stay right in the middle in this ideal space. And in this principle of you, not them. So when you're focusing on them, you become authoritarian because you are pushing them, you are hovering over them and pressuring them, right? Making sure that they are getting their homework done, right? But then the permissive side is that you don't focus on anybody. Like nobody gets your attention. You don't care or you're too stressed out to focus on anybody and you're being, you allow yourself to be permissive. So that's the, that's not the ideal. The ideal is you. And here's why. This is what I learned that, okay, what that means. All right. So, so maybe you're, you're thinking, oh my gosh, but how, how are my kids going to do their homework? How, how are they going to get their schoolwork done if I don't pressure them or if I don't push them? Well, you, you, they will. They will. And here's why. Because when you focus on yourself, number one, you have to lead by example. Your kids are not going to model what you're doing or model. They're not going to have a model. If they don't see you taking care of yourself, feeling your own mind, you're taking care of your body and your spirit, your soul, they won't have something to model. They won't see what greatness looks like. They won't see what health and balance and boundaries look like if you aren't taking care of yourself and doing those things. Also, they won't have any idea of the things that they should be learning or valuing if you aren't doing the things in your life to show what you are learning and what you are valuing. If you value education and you don't do anything to, to get your own education right in front of them where they can see it, then they're not going to have any desire to get their own education. I can't tell you how many times over the last 11, almost 12 years I've been homeschooling that my husband and I, we like to read, we like to write in our journals, we like to work on projects. We're working on something, sitting at the table reading, writing in my journal, and my daughter will come over and sit down, plop next to me with her journal, and start writing. I don't. I didn't ask her to do that. I didn't invite her over. Or there are so many times that like, we love listening to audiobooks. So we'll be wandering around the house listening to audiobooks. And so that is what it means to focus on myself. It's not that I'm neglecting my kids. It's I'm modeling for them what learning and education looks like. And when I come up against a problem, I model and demonstrate what it looks like to solve that problem. And then, and not to be like, oh my goodness, what's this problem and give up or anything like that. I model it and I let them see me facing these problems and overcoming the obstacles. So that's the first reason why I love the you, not them principle. You have to model the behavior that you want your children to see. Secondly, you can't draw from an empty well. You just can't. If you aren't taking care of yourself, if you aren't learning and getting your own education and doing these things, then how can you turn around and tell your kids what to do? Or how can you comfort them when they need direction and support? How can you guide them towards something that you want them to learn if you don't even know what's in the book, <laughs> right? So you have to be willing to do the work yourself and work on yourself. It Homeschooling has been like the top self-improvement program I have ever been involved in, right? Like to take care of myself and get this education myself. And then when I turn around and I tell my kids, hey, you should read this book, they know that I've read it and we can have a discussion around it, you know, or there's a principle, a program, something that I want them to learn. Then they see, have seen me doing it and they know that that's just normal. So, and, and then when they have questions, I have answers. It's not because I knew all the answers before, but because I have made it a study 
to find the answers myself and be prepared when my kids ask me these questions. The third reason why the you not them principle is so important is because it is a principle of conscious parenting. What, what com- this is a powerful, so powerful. Conscious parenting means that you are a mindful parent. It means that when you get triggered, you need to pause and recognize it is not my child that's triggering me. It's me. <laughs> okay? It's my own story. It's my own baggage, my own history. If I get panicked and angry because my kids won't do the schoolwork and I'm getting upset, it's probably because there's something in my story and in my history where somebody got mad at me or I got mad at myself because I didn't do the things that I wanted to do. I didn't keep my own promises. And so I need to stop and pause and recognize that pushing my kids is only going to lead to self-fulfilling prophecy of the thing I'm trying to get them to avoid. And it's because of my own baggage. So self, taking care of myself is not selfish. The you not them principle is all about being available being completely present with our kids so that they can be nourished because we care and because we are taking care of ourselves. And it won't translate to, well, I'm done. I don't want to take care of my kids anymore. It actually translates to, I feel so much more fulfilled and I want to give more to my kids.